Good afternoon and welcome to the 10 Big Steps to Prevent Falls webinar. My name is Tia Gully and I am the Falls Prevention Program Administrator for the Ohio Department of Aging. And we'd like to thank you for joining us and for using Ohio Falls Prevention Awareness Week to learn about how you can reduce your risk of falls for yourself or for your loved one. So the uh, 10 Big Steps to Prevent Falls is a collaboration between the Ohio Department of Aging Steady U Ohio Initiative and the Ohio Department of Health's Ohio Older Adult Falls Prevention Coalition. These webinars are made available with contributions from the Holmes County General Health District, Ohio Northern University, Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center, and Select Home Care. I hope you were able to join us yesterday for um, our Big Step Number One webinar, where we were able to learn more about understanding your falls risk, and then also Big Step Number Two, which was completing a falls risk assessment. If you missed it, you're in luck. Uh, we did record that, and we have added it to the SteadyU website, so be sure to go check that out. Today's webinar is going to be presented by Carrie McQueen, and she will be discussing how you can learn more about exercises that will help you to reduce your falls risk. So throughout the webinar, feel free to enter questions into the question box there on your panel. Um, everyone is in listening only mode. So if you have any questions or comments, be sure to add those there. And throughout the presentation, uh, Carrie and I will take time to stop and address those questions for you. So, Please join me in welcoming Carrie McQueen. Carrie? Good afternoon, Ohio from sunny Holmes County. So excited to be a part of this special webinar during National Falls Prevention Awareness Week. And actually, today is National Falls Prevention Awareness Day because it is the first official day of autumn. So I'm excited to be a part of this wonderful program. And today, as Tia shared, we're going to be talking about exercise and falls prevention and how really they do go hand in hand in keeping us safe physically, but also healthy. And so we're going to jump, jump right in. And the biggest thing that you will hear me use throughout our time this afternoon is about empowerment. I hope I will be able to empower you through this webinar today for you to step out of that comfort zone and become physically active in ways that you would never have thought of before. Because it's that understanding of how we can continue to improve ourselves, no matter the age, the number that we are in years. Uh, so it's so important for that. And so you're going to hear me use that word empowerment as we go on today. All right. So the big thing, physical activity. Now, as it says in front of you on that um, PowerPoint, is that engage in regular physical activity to improve your strength and balance. And this will help reduce your risk of falling. This is so very important because as we continue to build those muscles in our bodies, as we become physically active, the strength of those muscles, because as we age, our muscle mass changes. And when we don't use it, you know that saying, we lose it. And so we need to get to the point of daily physical activity. And that will help, as I said, improve your strength. But also, an important thing is your balance. Because in this falls prevention um, world that we need to be living in, you'll understand and realize that balance is one of those areas that when we age, that there's more risk of a fall because we don't use those muscles anymore and we lose that, that ability to catch ourselves to prevent a fall from occurring. So that engaging in regular physical activity is so important. And one of those major benefits in engaging in physical activity is you know it decreases your stress. And if it decreases your stress, hopefully it'll decrease your blood pressure. That's a positive. Also, it'll increase your ability to manage stress. When you become physically active, 
your body knows how to deal with stressful situations. You know, have you ever had a bad day and you're like, I just need to go out for a walk? That is an opportunity to help relieve that stress. So think about that. You know, people say as we grow older, you know, what stress do we have? But stress is all around us, especially during the pandemic. You know, we need to be able to find those ways that will help manage that stress. And physical activity is one of the best things you can do for yourself. And finally, you know, when we do something active, we can improve our mood as well. And during this pandemic, we know mental health issues have become more apparent because of social isolation. And there's at times for loneliness, and we may just feel left out of, of life. And so if we become physically active, especially during this time, it can improve that mood as well. And that is so very important. Tia, next slide, please. Now, scientists, they are an amazing group of individuals who take the time to really research what life is like when we do or don't do things. And, and scientists have found that staying physically active can help prevent or delay many diseases and disabilities. And you know what? I think all of us on that call know that. But for us to, as I said, step outside of our little comfort zone to do something brand new, because we know when we go to the doctor, the doctor is going to say, you know, you may need to, you need to lose some weight to help lower that cholesterol. And don't forget to exercise. So we know what scientists are saying. We know what our doctors are saying. And you know, it's time that we start empowering ourselves to realize that by getting out and exercising daily can really make a difference in preventing or delaying many of the diseases and disabilities that we may have as we grow older. And we do know that as we grow older, there, there are different things that happen. Our hearing may be affected. Our vision may be affected. We may have Parkinson's disease, which would change the, how we walk. Um, we may uh, have in, in items such as neuropathy in the feet because of diabetes. So all of these things together, we can help slow that progression and maybe even prevent some of this from occurring. So the importance of physical activity in an individual's life is so very important. Next slide, please. And lack of physical activity is where we see the most problems for multiple reasons. Now, if we reduce our involvement in physical activity, because of there's a fear of falling, because maybe we've fallen before, or maybe we have a, a disease that puts us at a, a higher risk of falling. For instance, as I said, you know, neuropathy of the feet and diabetes or Parkinson's disease. If we, can't, if we have that fear of falling, more than likely we're gonna fall. And also what will happen, unfortunately there's a pattern that happens. And Sean yesterday shared this in her webinar as well, is that if we have a fear, if we stop moving because we have a fear or because you know, we don't feel that, you know, I'm 70 years old and, you know, I don't need to exercise anymore. Those types of things, that lack of physical activity, unfortunately, puts you in a position of <clears throat> potential for more doctor visits because you're not physically healthy. More opportunities for, you know, going to the hospital because of a fall. And another thing that's really a, a huge thing in falls prevention is more use of medicines for a variety of illnesses. And with medications, and you'll learn this uh, at the end of the week of this webinar series, is that medications that we take for high blood pressure, for anxiety, different things like that, they have side effects for unsteady gait. 
meaning dizziness, blurred vision. And so unfortunately, you see a pattern occurring that when we stop moving, we're going to see the doctor more often. And even though I'm sure the doctor would like to see you, it's because you're not at a level of, of health that you need to be at. And so then you see the doctor and then the doctor prescribes medication to help you with these situations that are coming about because of that lack of physical activity. And then with those medications, there is a, another chance of that falls risk from happening. And, and that is, is the part where we in the fall prevention realm saddens us because we know that everybody has the ability to move. Even though if you may be limited in your movement, you still have the ability to move somehow. And any type of physical activity is going to benefit your body as a whole. And so that empowerment that I hope to, to share with you today will help you, as I said, step outside of that comfort zone and move. Go ahead, Tia, you can go to the next slide, please. What's the difference between physical activity and exercise? Before we jump into that real quick, I just want you to realize what physical activity is. Physical activity is that umbrella, and exercise falls underneath that umbrella. Tia, go to the next slide, please. All right, so the difference. So physical activities, it says, are activities that get your body moving. And there's a few examples there. Gardening, walking the dog, taking the steps instead of the elevator, parking, you know, a ways away from the entrance to the grocery store, so you have to walk, make sure, you know, all these different things. Anything that's going to get your body moving is considered a physical activity. Now, next slide, please. Now, when it comes to exercise, Exercise is the big thing because exercise is that form of physical activity that is planned, structured, and repetitive. Now, you see a picture on your screen of individuals doing some stretching. This is actually an exercise program. This exercise program, just by looking at that picture, these people are stretching their bodies, and that's an important form. Now, you may look at all those examples in front of you, weight training, Tai Chi, yoga, aerobics, and you may be thinking, well, I can't do any of that stuff. I can't do aerobics. Good grief. That's for 25-year-olds. You can jump around and do those types of things. I can't do weight training. I can't lift something heavy over my head. And here's the but. Yes, you can. It's the ability to understand what you have available to make it a part of a routine in your life. So yes, you can do weight training, and we'll talk about that as we move on in the slides. But it's important to realize that physical activity is the overarching umbrella, and exercise falls underneath that. And how you exercise is going to help you live a healthy life in the sense of being more mobile, maybe being more involved in life than you had ever been before. And that's an important thing to remember. Next slide, please. All right, the interesting thing about exercise is this. And see, I fall into this situation as well. I think of doing one type of exercise. And what I've been doing during the summertime, especially during the pandemic, is walking. Okay? Walking is good. But see, I neglected other areas, which, in all honesty, walking was good for me. But I need to have these other areas that we're going to learn about in just a moment, these four specific types of exercise. All right? So, yes. If we're going to do some walk-in, then we need to have a few other components to actually make it even better for your body. And that's the important thing to realize because as we continue, as we age, 
sometimes we think, and, and I'm right there with you because we're all aging each day. It's like, okay, what's the best thing for me? What kind of exercise is the best for me? Because, you know, when I think about it, you know, I think of exercising as push-ups and sit-ups and squats and all these things that these younger people can do with ease. But we have to remember through this understanding of a, what empowerment looks like is that everybody has to start somewhere. And so for us, starting out doing one thing is great, but we have got to educate ourselves how we continue to build our strength, help improve our balance, prevent falls, and live and deserve a quality of life that each one of us should be having anyways. And I just want to share with you something real quick. At the bottom of this exercise screen, there is a link. If at time as you go on or you come back to this webinar in the future, National Institute on Aging, which is a federal program, has a wonderful website, as well as the Ohio Department of Aging's website, Steady U Ohio, opportunities for you to continue to educate yourself on falls prevention, on exercise, because it's all about understanding what you need to be doing for you. Next slide, please. Before we move on, I was just wondering, does anybody have any questions so far? Doesn't look like we have any questions in the questions box yet, Carrie. But um, okay. to the attendees, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the question box. Okay, thank you, Tia. All right, so the four types of exercise that I had mentioned in the previous slide are endurance, strength, balance, and flexibility. Now, looking at those pictures, endurance, that man is running, strength, that woman's lifting weights, balance, the woman is standing on one foot, and the last one, flexibility, the man is stretching. So all of these things together helps provide each one of us the opportunity of truly getting our body to where it needs to be, safe, physically healthy, from falls, and just to be able to enjoy life. Now, I will say, I know, you know, I, I've given a lot of presentations over the years, and I know sometimes when these four words are brought up, people think, there's no way, I can't do that. And I want to take that word can't out of the vocabulary because endurance, as you're going to learn, doesn't mean you're going to run a 5K. Endurance can initially mean I'm going to walk down to the post office and back. Endurance is being able to get to the point where you know that your body is getting a workout. So as we learn about these four different types of exercises, I want you to stop and start thinking, how can I continue or how can I begin getting involved in these different types of exercises so I can have a quality of life that I deserve? Next slide, please. Endurance. Interesting. Endurance is referred, often referred to as aerobic activities. And remember when at one of those first slides we saw that physical activity, one of them was aerobics. And, you know, I had to laugh because I, re I remember doing aerobics when I was in college. And it's a lot of hard work. But the understanding that aerobic activity comes in various forms. And no, you don't have to get out and do those type of aerobics as we perceive ourselves. But you, those, those different types of examples, taking a brisk walk, autumn is here, so you know yard work is going to be occurring because of raking leaves, dancing, swimming is a wonderful endurance aerobic activity. Especially, there's also water aerobics, another opportunity to get in the water and Increase your breathing and heart rate. It's a wonderful opportunity. Biking, 
climbing stairs, you know, climbing up hills, getting out into the homes. If if you live in the country, if you don't, it, getting out to those special parks where you can actually move in those types of areas. Now, the, the really wonderful thing is, is that endurance, as I said, is not just something that happens overnight. It's important to realize you need to start at your level. And we're going to learn about that towards the end of our webinar today. But just get an understanding, you know, as I said, start thinking about how can you improve your endurance. And I've talked with a lot of individuals over the years. And, you know, they're like, well, I just can't. I just can't. I can't get out of the house. Okay. So what can you do in your house? that can help raise uh, that breathing and heart rate so you can get some form of aerobic activity. Because remember, the importance of having endurance, strength, balance, and flexibility, all four of those coming together will help improve your physical health. It will help you in the sense of preventing falls, because the stronger we are, the less likely, if we would have a fall, the less likely we would have an injury from a fall. And unfortunately, you know, falls in the United States are an epidemic. And so the, the place where we're starting right now is educating and bravo for you doing that. And then the next step is getting physically active. So I hope we can get you to that point where you're going to push forward and know that you have a chance to really make a difference in your life as well as others. Tia, next slide, please. Strength. Now, I know you see the picture and you're thinking, I am not going to be lifting weights. But the importance of strength training is huge. And no, you do not have to have dumbbells like the gentleman in the picture. What you can use are soup cans or water bottles. Those types of things are, you know, you don't have to go out to the store to buy them. But the importance is, is that you can do a lot of these upper body strength exercises in a seated position. So when you think about it, at a commercial break, you could do something, a uh, boxing, in the sense with two water bottles in your hands and box. Everybody can do that. You can do that type of boxing above your shoulders. That is going to get your heart pumping, those muscles moving, and that is so very important. Strength training doesn't necessarily mean lifting weights. It's also about your body weight. And, you know, when you think about it, our bodies aren't used a lot like that. And so, for instance, a, a strength training exercise that can be done. How many of us actually can get up out of a chair without putting our hands on something, be it the table in front of us, be it if we have armrests? And the interesting thing is, is if you can stand up without pushing off of something, you are actually exercising those lower legs. Because it's interesting, as we age, we think that we need the upper body strength. Yes, we do need upper body strength. But where we really need to put the, the push towards is getting our legs strong. And if we can start doing special exercises to get those legs strong, like pushing yourself up without using your hands, just using those legs, you're working those hamstrings. And that's so important because that helps with falls prevention. When you have those strong legs, it, it will be easier for mobility for you, but also it gives you the, the strength and the move and the drive to, to move. And that's so very important. So strength training not is only lifting weights, but it's also using your body for that weight and highly encourage you to do both. And remember, you don't have to go out and buy dumbbells. You, there's things around your house that you can use. So please use those. Next slide, please.
balance. All right, so falls prevention and being National Falls Prevention Awareness Week and National Falls Prevention Awareness Day, balance is one of those huge issues in falls prevention because research has shown that individuals who have problems with balance are more likely to fall. So how we can combat, combat that is to remember, as I said, getting those lower body workouts of those legs can help improve the balance. But there's also other techniques, and we're going to talk about um, one of them in just a moment. But look at the picture on, this, on, on the webinar right now. Gentleman it has one foot in the air, other foot planted, and one of his hands on the back of a chair. This is a wonderful, wonderful exercise to help gain lower body strength, but also to work on your balance. And what usually happens in an occasion like this is so the gentleman is holding and slowly at, he releases one finger at a time from the back of that chair. And before you know it, he will be balancing on that one leg. And then if you start getting wobbly, absolutely, you grab a hold of that, of that back of the chair. But it's the understanding. Remember, we talk about endurance and how, you know, how far we can go. The same thing is with these balance exercises as well as strength exercises. We know what our body is. We know what we can and we can't do. We know how far we can push our body. And so this is the opportunity right now for balance exercises truly to make a difference in your overall falls prevention programming in your brain because you know the importance of exercise. And you know the importance of being able to have a strong lower body, strong upper body, and to be able to use those to help prevent falls because the balance will be there. And so that's really, really important. And as I said, this is something easy that anybody can do. You can do it in the kitchen holding the side of the counter. Same thing. Know that you have the chance to do something that's going to make you healthy and stronger. Tia, next slide, please. All right, the final of the four exercises that we are encouraged to incorporate into our daily routine of exercise physical activity is flexibility. Now that first picture that we saw of all four of those, those different exercises that we needed to be doing. There was a gentleman on the ground trying to reach his toes. And you know something? I have a hard time reaching my toes that way too. But the thing with flexibility is movement. How are you going to move? One of those other pictures that it, about exercise, when you saw those individuals all seated and they have their hands above their head, that's stretching, okay? Stretching comes in all different areas, situations. And the one that the picture that you see in front of you right now, that's like a runner's stretch. What that does is that stretches the calf muscle. And we don't realize how tight our muscles are until we start trying to stretch them. And the more that we stretch our muscles, the healthier they will be. Because that when we constrict our muscles, that's when things start happening. That's when stress comes. That's when we could potentially fall, break something. But if we have that flexibility in those muscles, things relax. And that's a good thing. And so stretching should be done every day. And that stretching can be just by bringing your arms above your head with leaning to one side and to the other. Now remember, you can do this all seated. If you already have balance issues or if you're not mobile like you wanna be, stay seated. That's the safest place for you right now. But what you need to do is to continue to move your body no matter what type of situation you're in. Because the more we move our body, the more oxygen is going through our body the more opportunity for our body to actually start feeling good. And I will say, sometimes 
you know, we may do a little bit too much. We may stretch a little bit too far. When their pain, when pain starts to occur, obviously you need to back off. But it's taking your muscles to a different level through flexibility. It's about taking the, the different types of strength exercises to help improve your balance. It's about taking strength building exercises through weights or your own body weight that's going to make a difference. And it's all under endurance, getting out there and moving, which is the most important thing on how you can truly have a quality of life you deserve. And this is what we're going to continue to talk about. Next slide, please. Evidence-based fall prevention programs in Ohio. Now, I mentioned earlier, Steady U Ohio is an amazing tool through the Ohio Department of Aging. And in it, they have opportunities for us not only to be educated on falls prevention, but it has all these other different tools, all these other different links that help, can help keep you safe in the home when you're out and about, but it also provides opportunities for conversation between caregivers and loved ones who's having some issues with balance or falls. It's about understanding what we can do for each other. And I highly encourage you to go to the Steady You webpage to check it out. And one next slide, please. And one of those things that you're going to find on Steady You is different programs that are offered within the state of Ohio. Now, on that previous slide, it says evidence-based programs. Evidence-based programs are very important in the realm of public health because what it's showing is, is that there's been research done in these certain areas. And in these certain areas, the research has shown that if you do this, you, your risk of falling will decrease. And so what the Ohio Department of Aging has done, created this amazing webpage, Steady You, this initiative, and they've offered these two evidence-based programs that are offered throughout the state of Ohio. And they actually have on their webpage uh, instructors' names as well as program dates for these two evidence-based programs that I'm gonna talk about. And this first one is Tai Chi Moving for Better Balance, also known as Tai Chi Quan Moving for Better Balance. Now, this program is a, an adapted version of a Tai Chi called Yang, and it's Y-A-N-G. And it's an amazing eight forms that they have adapted to help with balance issues. Now, some of you may think, oh, I, Tai Chi is, is not oh, in my belief system, in the realm of, you know, that is something that I know nothing about. But I will say, when I was introduced to Tai Chi moving for better balance, I was surprised to, to realize that the only thing that is going on in these programs is actually teaching individuals how to know where your feet are planted at all times, moving from side to side, front and back. And when you do all of these different things, the only thing that you're, you're focusing on is knowing where my feet are planted. And through this whole entire eight forms that you learn in Tai Chi Moving for Better Balance is that you realize that your legs, your feet are going to be placed in different types of situations which would help increase the leg strength. And remember, when we talk about fall prevention, we know that sometimes when we stumble over a crack in the sidewalk or a rug in the hallway, sometimes we, we actually fall because of that. But when you take a program like Tai Chi and you learn those different forms, your muscles will have something called muscle memory. They'll be able to catch you when you fall, literally. Is it something that happens all the time? No, I can't say that. I can't say it's guaranteed. But I can say that your body will know the difference if you're involved in an activity like Tai Chi because it's so important to be able to move those legs. And I, as I said, I've been doing Tai Chi for the past four years, and it truly has made a difference. 
And I know I've seen a difference in my balance. And people who participate in my programs in Holmes County keep coming back because they know that they have seen and felt a difference as well. Next slide, please. All right, just a few of the benefits of Tai Chi. You know, we talk about the importance of physical activity and the importance and, and what it does for us. Same thing with Tai Chi, because remember, this is an exercise. It's a planned, structured movement. It increases, uh, you know, stress and anxiety. Cause, and remember, that also can help decrease medication for those type of, of things that we have. Um, increase that aerobic capacity. Remember, we're talking about endurance. And we need to get that heart rate up. It's an opportunity to, to do that. Increase energy. Increase flexibility. As I said, balance is a huge thing. For this one and also increase muscle strength and definition you would be surprised on how much strength your muscles gain by participating in tai chi because you may look at it i don't know if you would search it on the web or whatever but you look at it it's a beautiful dance it appears but you don't realize how your body is working and engaging and it it, it becomes funny because you're like, oh my gosh, you know, just because I'm doing this, I'm actually making a difference in my body. Yes, you are. And it's so important to realize the benefits of moving and Tai Chi moving for better balance or Tai Chi Quan moving for better balance is that opportunity to do that. Next slide, please. Another evidence-based program that you will find on the SteadyU website is called a matter of balance managing concerns about falls and this is an educational based program eight week program where they talk about falls fall prevention attitude towards falls and the biggest thing is is about a fear of falling and because we know we've talked about this at the beginning that you know when we have a fear of falling we usually restart restricting our activities and when we start restricting our activities that means we stop moving and when we stop moving, that's when things start happening. Falls could increase our, you know, our body will change, you know, might have opportunities for high blood pressure now, medication, you know, that cycle. So matter of balance helps pull all of that information out, talk about attitudes and how we can change it. And then there's a, a component of exercise, exercise in it as well, where you are taught different strength and balance exercises that will help improve through, you know, that strength training, that endurance, that flexibility, everything that we've been talking about already, and balance to, to bring into a true form of exercise that can be done on a daily basis. Next slide, please. And, you know, matter of balance helps you set activity goals. Because, you know, we, what really we all need to be doing is to get physically active daily and for it to be a part of a routine. And so that's why, you know, setting realistic goals is so very important. I also talk about environment changes, be it your home, be it uh, when you're outside and, you know, in public, looking for those things for potential fall risk. And that's so very important. And that's something that we, I want to say me, I'll say me, I usually take for granted because I'm not paying attention. And paying attention or not paying attention is one of those factors that lead to a fall. And so matter of balance helps guide you into paying attention, knowing where you're going, knowing what environment you're going into and how you can stay safe and prevent a fall for yourself as well as for someone else. And as I shared earlier, that it also offers some simple exercises that will help with your strength and your balance. Next slide, please. All right. So talked about physical activity and different types of exercises that you need to be incorporating into your daily life. But 
before you do any of that. That's your education. That's knowing what you need to be doing to stay healthy, to think outside the box, do things you've never done before because you're worth it. Before you begin anything like that, you need to talk to your doctor before you start any type of exercise program. And there's three questions that are in front of you right now. Are there any exercises or activities I should avoid? Absolutely important question to ask your doctor or nurse practitioner. Is my preventative care up to date? You know, do I need a bone scan to see if I have osteoporosis? These things you need to be talking to your doctor about. And the final question, how does my health condition affect my ability to exercise? This is another big question to ask, and you need to have an open and healthy conversation with your doctor or nurse practitioner about this. Because if I have diabetes and I have neuropathy in my feet, that means I can't feel my feet most times. Okay. So my doctor is going to talk to me about what I need to be doing. My doctor may even suggest I go to physical therapy first and then start doing exercises on my own. But for you to have a candid conversation with your doctor about what your current health condition is and how you can safely exercise is imperative. And I, I wish that we all would do that because sometimes we think, oh, it's no big deal. I can go ahead and do that. It's not that bad. Yeah, we may think that, but there might be something that's going to hold us back. And we, we, we want to keep you safe. You want to stay safe. And you want to get to a point of being physically active as safe as you can be. And it's talking to your doctor. Next slide, please. All right. Um, Tia, we skipped the slide. I think. There we go. That's it. All right. How much physical activity should I do a week? And oh, my goodness. Those numbers, you got to be kidding. 150 minutes a week? That's 30 minutes a day, five days a week. How, how can I do that? And they want you to do aerobic activity. Oh, my goodness, how can I do that? I'm busy during the day. Okay, yay, you're busy during the day. But we need to get into an attitude of what can I do? 30 minutes a day for myself needs to be a priority. And when we think about it, the 30 minutes doesn't have to come in one time. It can be done in 10-minute increments. But it's the understanding of, you know, okay, this is something I can work up to, 30 minutes a day, five times a week. How can I do that? What do I need to do to get myself there? And we're going to talk about that in a moment. Don't let those numbers scare you because it's, it's helping you realize the importance of moving. And as it says at the top of that infographic, move your way. Remember, empowering yourself to move in a safe way, a fun way, a way that's going to truly help you be a stronger, healthier individual. That's what it's all about. So they're saying 150 minutes a week at least and at least two days a week of muscle strengthening activity. Now, just as a little aside, my doctor told me to do this. She's like, Carrie, walk at least a half hour a day and use two pound weights. So what I do is I put two pound weights in my hands and I, it's called power walking, all right? That increases my heart rate. Now, you don't have to do that. You don't have to go out and get Weights, as I said, you can use water bottles, but see, take something that you may already be doing and incorporate strength training into it. That's what the, the, the must, the, um, 
dumbbells are being used for as well. But remember, you need to move your way. You need to realize what you can and what you can't do. And the importance of just moving will help and benefit you immeasurably. Next slide, please. All right, so how do I get started? Yikes, I have no idea. But we do. We know we need to find ways to increase our daily activity and then do it slowly. This is a challenge, the next big step that you guys have the opportunity of doing. And it's creating those short and long-term goals. For instance, I want to walk down my street two times as a short-term goal. So doing those things that you know you have, a, it's realistically set. And, you know, develop a weekly exercise plan. But most importantly, that's realistic for you. Because remember, all of us are different. So what's best for you? And this is one, this last one is one of the most important things is to find a friend who can be your accountability partner. Someone that you can go through this exercise journey with. Because you know what? To do it by yourself sometimes is a struggle because there's not someone there encouraging you along the way. So find somebody who can be that encouragement. That's how you get started. Next slide, please. One of the most important things is, is to stay positive. I cannot stress that enough. One of the hardest things for us to humans to do, no matter what age you're at, to do something new, there's always some type of apprehension. For instance, going into a Tai Chi Moving for Better Balance class and you have no clue what's going on. By just setting foot into that program, you are showing yourself and others that you're ready to make a difference in your life. And that's huge. Everybody starts from the beginning and everybody has the capacity to learn. So please stay positive. Celebrate your successes no matter how small. And you know, there are some days when I miss my exercise, maybe two days in a row. I feel guilty, but the thing is, is just get back into that routine because we all do it. And you know something? The biggest thing is, is to smile because you're showing others what positive aging looks like. And then people can talk to you about what you're doing because you look so great. You have a positive attitude. And that is because you're moving. Next slide, please. So it's time to get moving. It's time to realize you can be active no matter what age or circumstance you're in. Yeah, and it's time to take a stand against false because each one of you deserves a quality of life that is filled with love and joy and health. And false doesn't need to be a part of that. And we don't want it to be a part of that. I just want to share a quick quote before, if there's any questions. But uh, in Holmes County, I have a positive aiding champion. And my positive aiding champion for August is a, a sweet person, wonderful individual named Carol. And she shared this with me. She said, my advice for positive aging is to find a way to exercise our bodies and when we have some downtime, exercise our brain cells too. Our age is only a number. It shouldn't define who we are. Our age is only a number. It shouldn't define who we are. And that is the truth. It's just a number. So get out of your little comfort zone. 
start moving, start educating, talk to your doctor, and realize the importance of getting into a routine of daily physical activity and knowing that you're doing everything you can to help prevent falls within your life as well as others. Next slide, please. And this last slide is just references that I use throughout the PowerPoint. As I said, uh, Ohio Department of Aging, as well as the National Institute on Aging, wonderful site to find exercise programs, as well as instructors uh, that offer these programs within the state of Ohio. I am so blessed to have been a part of this webinar today. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer anything. Thank you so much, Carrie, for that. Um, we did have a couple of questions. Um, mostly we're looking for the NIH um, links where they will be available. And I did share that they, we do have some links on the StudyU website. And then um, another question, Carrie, that came through for you um, was any advice about good exercises to do um, if you have issues with vertigo? Oh, vertigo. Yeah, that that's a, a rough situation to be in, and, and I'm sorry. But I'm glad you're on this webinar because it's important, obviously, to talk to your doctor. I know at times there's a physical therapist that are trained specifically in vertigo that can help with that. And finally, I will say that knowing your body, and I'm sure the individual who asked is probably on some type of medication for this. First of all, knowing the side effects from that medication is very, very important. But I will say that in one of my Tai Chi Moving for Better Balance classes, I had an individual who did have vertigo, and it had been a struggle. And she knew her limitations. Uh, in the sense that she knew when she started feeling poorly that she would sit down. And so I would encourage you to, as I said, reach out to your doctor and, and ask possibly about getting um, referred to a physical therapist who focuses on that solely. But if you can find a Tai Chi Moving for Better Balance or Tai Chi for Arthritis, Tai Chi Quan Moving for Better Balance program, that can help because remember, these movements are very slow in nature. It's not a fast paced jerking um, exercise program. And I know usually the slower, the better for those individuals who have vertigo. So I, I'm sure I didn't give a, as much information as you'd like about vertigo and exercising, but that would be the, the direction that I encourage you to go in. Thank you, Carrie. So I think that, that was all we have for questions. So I'd like to thank you for sharing this important information with us. Um, following the presentation, I would like to invite all of the attendees to continue on um, this topic to participate in Big Step Number Four, which is to create an exercise plan. So Carrie gave us a lot of great information about different exercises to consider, things that you need to keep in mind as you begin to um, move into starting an exercise program. So you can also find some more tools to help you in creating your exercise plan for yourself on the SteadyU website under Big Step number four. Um, please also note that a recording of this webinar will be available on the SteadyU website soon as well. So Carrie, again, thank you to all the attendees. We hope that you will also join us tomorrow for uh, big step number five, where we will hear from Ann Smith from the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center. And she was gonna talk through how we can fall proof our home. So we hope that you can join us for that. If you have not registered for that particular webinar, again, you can register at the SteadyU website. So thank you for attending. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us at steadyu.ohio.gov. Have a good afternoon, everyone. Thank you.